Hello, it's the Jessica Bryan channel, and um, I just want you to, to be the first to hear this: that there is human flesh on sale for consumption in the United Kingdom right now, and it's legal. Oh yes, there used to be. There was a time when eating human flesh was called cannibalism, and it was illegal. But now there is a legal way to eat human flesh. It's called the British Miracle Meat, made with human flesh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They grow human flesh in a way that, you know, they incubate it and engineer it into structured flavors. I mean, they use tissues from the human body to produce this meat. I'll play the video for you to watch. I mean, you just can't make the stuff up. You can't watch the video because they said that um the cost of living crisis is making things difficult for people many families cannot afford cow meat and all that so they want to produce cheap meats or they're already producing cheap meats made from human flesh that people can easily afford and consume and they say it's quite proteinous they have donors lined up people to donate their 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 body tissues they donate it and the people get paid about 250 pounds to donate and when they donate, they make 50,000 steaks every day for human consumption. Watch the video first. Watch it. And then I'll come back to, you know, reason it out with you. You can't beat British grub. But these days, you've got to spend a packet to bring home the bacon. And don't even get me started on the eggs. The cost of living crisis is hitting Britain hard, with food prices rising at the fastest rate in 40 years. But now, a new line of affordable protein is hitting our shelves. This is engineered human meat. That's right, a protein made from human cells that promises to be cheaper and tastier than any of its competitors. I'm Greg Wallace. And I'm off to visit Good Harvest, where a whopping six tonnes of human meat is engineered every day. That is stunning. With the promise of cheap meat for all, it may well be the meaty miracle we need to ease the squeeze of the cost of living. Anyone for human meat? I'm Michelle Ackley, and while Greg comes face to face with the production line, I'll be conducting a taste test with some very picky palates. It's really um, tender. For the first time, we're going to find out where it comes from, how it's made, whoa, and what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. I'm up bright and early to check out the Good Harvest processing plant in Boston in Lincolnshire. But it wasn't the most scenic of drives. High fences, barbed wire, security lights. It's a bit like a prison. What next? Machine gun tower? Hello? It's Greg Wallace. I've got an appointment. I'm the ball bloke off the telly yeah. with, the, with the glasses. I couldn't wait to see the mysteries that lay inside. How do you solve the cost of living crisis with engineered human meat? It sounds like magic. And this is where the magic happens. The Good Harvest processing plant has been up and running for over eight months. It contains both industrial and clinical operations on a site the size of four football pitches. Hey, are you Mick? I certainly am. Pleased to meet you, Greg. Very good to meet you. I'm here to learn. Right, come this way and I'll show you how it all works. I want to see everything. Oh, you will. <laughs> Mick Ross oversees the production line and is in charge of over 60 full-time staff who engineer roughly 50,000 steaks every day. So come on then, Mick. How on earth do you grow human meat? I want to introduce you to our nutrient vat. Hello, nutrient vat, Greg Wallace, <laughs> telly presenter, and your job is? Well, what its job is, it processes thin slices of tissue in a nutrient-rich mix, which you see here, and then cells start to grow. So over a 24-hour period, these will slowly fuse together into one great big, what we call a cake. So you're telling me that that is human flesh? Exactly. But why human meat? Why not animal meat? That's a very good question. We've got centuries of knowledge of human medicine at our side. We know more about humans than we do about animals. So we've mastered engineering human cells to make these structured flavors and sinews that we expect from the flavors of steaks we eat. Good Harvest encourages people who need the income to sign up, select their own extraction site, and get paid within the week. 
You expect to be feeding the nation with this. You are going to need a lot of donors. Well, it's well in demand, and we've got a lot of people coming forward, because the other great thing about it is it's an opportunity to be paid. Would you ever consider donating yourself? Yeah, maybe I would. I mean, I may have to. My bills are as high as anybody else's. You know, I've got a young family, I've got a daughter to, to feed, so... And would you feed your family human steaks? Oh, yes, most definitely. Already have. After the donor's tissue samples are placed in the nutrient vat, they're stimulated with electrodes and left to grow at 40 degrees centigrade at the Proving Bay. So, Greg, after a few hours, this is what we're left with. Whoa! <laughs> no way! Mate, that's the biggest chunk of meat I've ever seen. I mean, scientifically, that's amazing. But in terms of food, that is stunning. It is incredible, isn't that it? That is stunning. Look at it. This 30 kilogram protein cake will be cut into nearly 100 steaks, and it's all been grown from the cells of just one person. So maybe you'll give me a, a hand to lift it out. There we go. One, two, three, that's it. Whoa, whoa, crying out loud. We're going to take it over onto the oh, resting board. There we go. Wow. This must be a relatively new process. Oh, it is. I mean, under EU law, we couldn't possibly operate machines like this due to legislation, but thankfully now we're out. We can harvest people and we can pay them for their flesh. So what happens to this now? Right, well, this will either be cut into steaks or it'll go off and be processed for sausages, burgers, you name it. You can do anything with it. Proper space age, isn't it? This it is, so meets it's... me up, Scotty. <laughs> I'd got to grips with the guts of human meat production, but I wanted to know, how does this new protein compare to a real steak? It was time for that all-important taste test. I knew just the chef for the job. I'm off to La Gavroche, a two Michelin star restaurant in the exclusive London borough of Mayfair, to see top chef Michelle Rue Jr. Chef, look at this. Look, I am seriously intrigued. This is a meat I've never seen before. I want to see what the fat content's like. I want to see what the flavour's like. I want you to cook it, because I don't know anybody better. Hang on a minute. Good harvest, made by humans from humans? Yeah, these come from three donors in the northeast of England. Wow. I wonder if that affects the flavour. You're right. Do donors from the northeast of England have a different flavour and texture to, to ones from the southeast? I would have thought so, because it's what we call in French terroir. It's where, where you were brought up, you are what you eat at the end of the day. And we're going to find out. For my blind taste test, Michelle would cook up three different steaks, and we'd work out what sort of person they were grown from. Ideally, I want it reared outside, I want it looked after, not stressed. These donors were from the northeast. So what about a beer-fed Geordie? Oof, I don't know. It's very, very difficult to get my head around. This looks quality. So we're just gonna. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Mm. You alright? Mm. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna put it on the plate. So we just need to let it rest for five minutes and then you can taste it. Michelle had cooked up a human meat feast of three succulent steaks. Now the taste test could begin. Wow, beautifully cooked, of course, nicely presented. Should we both try this one first? Mmm, OK, right, let's go. These engineered steaks are grown from the cells of human donors who are paid for their flesh. But can we guess which sort of person each steak has been grown from? Hmm. Yeah, you've got to chew this one. I mean, this, this... This is really... Mm. This steak is actually one of the cheaper ones in the range. If it was 100% pure beef, I'd say that this was an animal that's got a certain age. Um, yes, you have seen the video. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you're thinking what I'm thinking. I don't know as a child of God, as a Christian, if the Bible allows this because God specifically told us in the book of Leviticus the kind of meat we should eat, cow meat. We are not even allowed to eat pigs or donkey. Donkey meat, pig meat, they're not allowed. When you read the book of Leviticus, it's clear there. So I don't know how we can now graduate to eating human flesh. Even God warned us not to drink blood or eat any, anything with blood in it. He listed the kind of animals we are allowed to eat. We are not allowed to eat animals from humans. That's my thinking. What do you think? Can you tell me what you think in the comment section? And as you're doing that, please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe to the Jessica Bryan channel. Share this information. This information is very crucial. Please, this is not one of those videos you watch and, you know, just watch and watch and just, I mean, put it off and move on. No, this is a crucial information that everybody needs to know. That human meat, meat made from tissues from the human body, as in meat made from human flesh, 
available for consumption now in the United Kingdom, made in a factory at Boston, Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire is the United is in the United Kingdom. My brothers and sisters, I think I need to th- reason it out. I need to chew on this a little bit. I need to really think about it because I just finished watching the video and I'm I'm just confused. Really, I'm confused, but. I don't think I see myself eating this kind of meat. I don't see myself eating it. Thank you so much for stopping by. God bless you richly.